Greetings, everyone. Have you ever pondered about the origins of the tuna we consume? The methods through which tuna reaches our dinner tables vary widely and are distinctly different. Tuna farming and wild tuna fishing represent two contrasting approaches. In the case of tuna farming, juvenile tuna have specific dietary needs that must be fulfilled to support their growth and development. Therefore, efforts are made to replicate their natural diet by providing live or frozen prey items to stimulate the fish's natural feeding instincts. Due to the significant investment required in tuna farming, due to the large size of the fish, a cost-effective solution has been devised. Pelleted feed, designed specifically to meet the nutritional needs of the fish at different stages of their life cycle. This feed is manufactured to resemble their natural prey, as tuners are discerning eaters. If the pellets did not resemble their natural prey, they would be left floating in the water. When tuna reach market size, they are selected for harvesting based on specific criteria, including size, weight, and market demand. Tuna that meet these standards are chosen for harvest, while smaller or lower quality fish may be allowed to continue growing. Once the tuna are deemed ready for transfer, they are prepared for larger grow-out facilities where they undergo acclimation to new water parameters to minimize stress during the transition. Alternatively, tuna wild fishing has a long history dating back thousands of years, with evidence of tuna being harvested for food and trade by ancient civilizations like the Phoenicians, Greeks and Romans. Modern tuna wild fishing often involves longline fishing, one of the most common commercial methods used to catch tuna. This method is highly selective, allowing fishermen to target specific sizes and species of tuna while reducing the bycatch of non-target species. After the fishing vessel returns to port, containers of tuna pieces are transferred to larger transportation vessels for shipment to auction facilities or processing plants. Tuna species vary in size and weight, with some growing larger than others. For instance, the Atlantic bluefin tuna is one of the largest species, reaching lengths of over 10 feet and weighing several hundred pounds due to its substantial size. Throughout the transportation process, 
Maintaining the cold chain is essential to preserve the freshness and quality of the tuna pieces. Tuna auctions are captivating events where the best pieces are sold to the highest bidders. Upon arrival at the processing facility, harvested tuna undergoes inspection for quality, freshness and compliance with regulatory standards. Often, a small piece is cut for retailers to assess flesh quality. Each tuna piece's weight and relevant information are recorded, documented on auction sheets or electronic systems for reference during the auction process. Notably, market demand can drive prices exceptionally high. In January 2019, a record-setting £612 bluefin tuna sold for a staggering $3.1 million at the Toyosu market's first auction of the year, earning the nickname Diamond of the Sea. Skilled workers use sharp knives to carefully remove the stomach, intestines, liver and other internal organs from the tuna without causing damage. Depending on the intended use, tuna fillets are portioned into various sizes and shapes to suit different recipes and serving styles. Tuna fillets may contain pockets of fat or connective tissue that can affect texture and flavour. Thus, Trimming involves removing excess fat and any tough or undesirable portions to enhance overall quality. These vessels, known as fishing ships, feature dedicated refrigeration spaces for storing the caught tuna. Once on board, the tuna is transferred into containers via conveyors. Among the commercially sought-after tuna species is the Atlantic bluefin, known for its substantial size, often exceeding 150 kilos per fish. The filled containers of tuna are then lifted by forklifts onto covered trucks bound for the factory. Upon arrival at the factory, the trucks unload the tuna which is then transported by forklifts to the production line. Now, let's explore how these tuna fish are processed in the factory, where workers specialise in cutting and separating the fish into different parts. Upon arrival at the cutting plant within the factory, hundreds of workers focus solely on this task. Initially, the workers use a cutting machine to separate the tail and head sections of the tuna.
Next, utilizing another machine, the tuner is segmented along the spine, resulting in four distinct parts. The workers then remove the spine from each tuner piece. Following this, the workers carefully remove the belly portion of the tuner, as displayed on the screen. Although in certain factories, robotic arms are employed for these tasks. Following the initial processing stages, a shaping machine is utilised to standardise the shape of the tuna fish meat. Subsequently, workers assemble the meat into trays according to the size and weight of the fillet pieces. These trays filled with meat are then conveyed to the cooking facility on tray rollers. At the cooking plant, workers place these trays into a tank where the temperature exceeds 100 degrees C, effectively cooking the tuna meat thoroughly. After the tuna meat is cooked and processed, it undergoes various stages within the factory before being prepared for market. Upon boiling, the meat may exhibit burn marks, which workers carefully remove using a scraper. Once cleaned, the tuna meats are packed into boxes and a worker uses a machine to imprint and affix a serial number onto each box. Subsequently, these boxes are placed on a conveyor line where workers arrange the tuna meats onto rollers. The meats are then minced under the roller and filled into containers by a machine. A machine applies pressure to weld the lid securely onto the container, ensuring a tight fit. Subsequently, the containers undergo a thorough washing process with water to ensure cleanliness. Once cleaned, the containers are moved along the line to the heating plant, where workers arrange them on tray rollers for further processing. The containers are placed in a heating tank to undergo a specific heat treatment. After heating, the hot containers are cooled using water. To dry the containers, fans blow air over them in the factory, ensuring they are completely dry. Next, each container moves through a levelling line to a levelling machine, which applies a levelling sticker containing details such as the company name, manufacturing date and expiry date. The steel containers filled with tuna meat are then directly transferred into paper boxes for later marketing. Now, the dried tuna mince meats are prepared for sale in the market. Additionally, small pieces of whole tuna are also processed for market sale, and we will explore that process now. Initially, factory workers manually cut the tuna meat into small pieces. These pieces are then neatly arranged in containers, resembling a layered cake. The containers are then moved along a conveyor line where an automatic capping machine seals them. Subsequently, forklifts transport these containers to the heating plant, where they undergo disinfection in a heating tank. After disinfection, the containers proceed for packaging.
The size and weight of the tuna containers vary based on the meat size, ranging from 89 grams to 1,000 grams respectively. Finally, this processed tuna meat is ready for sale in the market, providing convenient options for consumers seeking tuna products in various forms. Were you aware that the majority of seafood available in today's markets or supermarkets is farmed rather than caught in the wild? Shrimp, fish, crabs and numerous other types of seafood are predominantly cultivated in sea farms, a practice that both safeguards the ecosystem and fulfills market demands. Let's delve into how a grouper farm operates through our featured video. Grouper farms come in various models. Some utilize floating or submerged cages, while others incorporate large tanks to allow fish freedom of movement. The predominant trend in grouper farming is the establishment of outdoor sea farms. Moreover, researchers are exploring and innovating land-based marine fish farms utilising closed systems. By implementing an automated seawater circulation system, large storage tanks equipped with oxygen aeration systems sustain optimal oxygen levels for the fish. Leveraging state-of-the-art equipment, individuals maintain the fish in an ideal living environment with precise temperature control. Although this farming method has yet to be widely adopted, it represents a significant stride in the seafood industry. Not only does it preserve natural ecosystems, but it also mitigates the risks that fish face in the wild. In this envisioned future, where human reliance on nature diminishes, grouper farms primarily sustain their fish with trash fish, including termites, anchovies, herring, and catfish. To ensure the health of farmed fish, these trash fish must be fresh, undergoing purification and parasite removal through soaking in fresh water before feeding to prevent disease transmission. Additionally, farms often preserve trash fish by freezing it, later grinding and pressing it into pellets resembling dry food for feeding. Grouper are typically fed twice daily, in the morning and afternoon, with bait spread slowly to facilitate easy consumption by the fish. Feeding quantities are adjusted based on the fish's weight, with small fish receiving 10% of their body weight and larger fish receiving 3 to 5%. 
However, in instances of weather or environmental changes or disease outbreaks, fish may exhibit reduced appetites, prompting adjustments in feeding quantities accordingly. Harvesting occurs after 9 to 10 months of rearing, depending on the group of species. During harvesting, nets are raised slowly to angle the fish towards collection. Soft nets are utilised to avoid damaging the fish's scales or causing injuries, as such injuries can diminish the fish's value. Harvested fish are then transferred to tanks and transported to processing plants or restaurants. For long distance transportation, fish are stored in ice boxes to maintain their freshness. Following harvesting, grouper fish are transported to processing factories where skilled workers meticulously remove the bones and skin, leaving behind only the succulent meat. Subsequently, the meat undergoes a thorough cleansing process in a jacuzzi before proceeding to the packaging stage. Frozen marine fish products are highly favoured by consumers due to their convenience and extended shelf life. Additionally, fresh grouper is directly shipped to restaurants, catering to diners who appreciate the taste of fresh seafood. The nutritional richness of grouper meat containing essential vitamins and amino acids, such as omega-3 and omega-6, contributes to the development of the nervous system and cognitive function, making it an ideal dietary choice for both the elderly and children. Moreover, grouper can be prepared in numerous culinary styles, further enhancing its versatility. Not only is it a high-value economic product, but it also holds symbolic significance, particularly during the auspicious first days of the Chinese year, where it represents luck and prosperity. Being invited to enjoy grouper dishes signifies great respect in many cultures. When conditions are favourable, catfish farming holds significant profit potential. Nevertheless, akin to other agricultural ventures, catfish cultivation demands substantial investment capital and entails various risks. Hence, the crucial question arises. What methodologies are optimal for catfish rearing? Contemporary catfish enclosures are meticulously crafted to enhance productivity while mitigating environmental impact.
similar to numerous pisciculture setups, they employ a recirculating system for catfish cultivation. This contemporary approach yields substantial advantages, necessitating the recirculating catfish enclosure's design to ensure optimal depth and lake height. Furthermore, supplementary systems such as water purification, automated feeding, surveillance, wastewater treatment, and a plethora of other equipment are integrated to establish optimal conditions conducive to catfish growth. In extensive catfish farming operations such as this, a time-saving method is employed instead of manually incubating the eggs. This involves directly injecting sperm into the ovaries for fish breeding. Typically, this fertilization technique begins with the careful selection of healthy sperm, which is then preserved in cold conditions within test tubes. Subsequently, the prepared sperm is introduced into the catfish ovaries to facilitate the reproduction of high-quality catfish. Understanding the appropriate care and feeding protocols is paramount for accelerating catfish growth. Generally, catfish feeding regimens should be tailored according to the fish's age and size. During the initial stages of life, a mixture of feed is recommended, with smaller pellet sizes being suitable. As the catfish mature, larger food sizes can be introduced accordingly. Once the catfish attain a weight of one kilogram or more, transitioning to feed sizes of eight or 10 millimeters may be considered optimal. In addition to the food size, the feeding frequency plays a crucial role in catfish farming. Typically, catfish are fed twice a day, although some operations may opt for once daily feeding to streamline processes. Ensuring adequate oxygen supply is a routine and vital aspect of fish care. Oxygen aerators play a significant role in maintaining water cleanliness within the tank, while filters contribute to the overall health of the fish.
As catfish are harvested and prepared for market, primarily destined for processing plants, meticulous cleanliness and sterilization of equipment are paramount before commencing the slaughter process. Initially, the catfish are conveyed to the washing area where unnecessary organs are removed. Subsequently, each fish is thinly sliced and the resulting meat is transported to the packaging section where it is labeled and stored at cold temperatures to maintain freshness for consumers. The effectiveness and profitability of a catfish farm hinge on the operational strategies and the farmer's dedication to management. Catfish farming not only serves as a primary income source, but also fulfills familial recreational and dietary requirements. The success of well-structured and maintained catfish farms underscores the importance of meticulous planning. We genuinely appreciate your support and enthusiasm for our channel. Your continued viewership means the world to us and we are committed to providing valuable content that enriches your knowledge and endeavours. Thank you wholeheartedly for being a part of our community.